to call the math lady. Today we're dealing with equations with exponents. All right, so up until now, all of our equations have just had like a 5x or a 5y or a 3a. Really, the exponent next to our variable has been a 1, right? We don't even write it. But today we're going to work on something where the exponent is greater than 1. What do we do? Well, you know the first thing we have to do is get the x by itself. So to get rid of our 4, we're going to divide by 4 on both sides. So we start just like we always would. And then simplify. On this side, we are left with an x squared. And on the other side, when we simplify, we are left with a 9. Okay, now this should also look familiar, right? What number times itself equals a 9? Well, you're going to have two answers. x is going to equal a positive 3, and x is also going to equal a negative 3, right? Because negative 3 times a negative 3 is a positive 9. You can write it like that, or you can write it like this, plus or minus 3. Those are the two ways you can write it. Let's make it a little more complex. We have got two steps in this. I should probably say even three now, right? We've got to solve for x. What do we do? First thing we do is let's get rid of the one, the one that's not attached to the x. Well, let's do it by subtracting that one from both sides of the equation. You know I like to use my red marker. Boom equals 49 minus 1. And that we're left with, when that cancels out, we've got a 3x squared equals a 48. Okay, what do we do here? Looks like what we just did. we got to get rid of our 3. So let's divide both sides by 3 and simplify. We're left with an x squared, and we are left with 3 goes into 4 one time. We have an 18 to deal with. 3 goes into 18 six times. x squared equals 16. One more step. We've got to get this down to just the x. So what times what, or what are the square roots of 16? We have a positive 4, and we have a negative 4. Or again, another way to write it is plus or minus 4. That's your answer. Now, what do we do when we have a problem written like this? Well, we have to translate it from our English language to our mathematical language. Let's do it. Seven more than, which means we know we're going to be adding seven more plus seven to something. Let's figure out what that something is. Seven more than what number squared? When we say what number, we know that's x. So x squared is, means equal, 71. Okay, we just learned how to solve this, so let's do it. Let's get rid of that 7 by subtracting 7 from both sides. Okay, this cancels out. We have an x squared, and this we're left with is a 64. x squared equals 64. What are the two square roots? of 64. x equals a plus or minus 8. Positive 8 and negative 8 is your answer. Take a look at this example. Here we have a square. What if the area, I told you the area of the square is 49 centimeters squared, but I don't know what the sides are. And I asked you, find the sides. Well, we know the formula for the area of a square is side times side. Right? Well, side times side is the same thing as saying side squared. And our area comes out to 49. Okay, well, mathematically, when we solve this, we know that 49 has two roots a positive 7 and a square root, I should say, and a negative 7. But I have to look back at my answer. It wants to know what the sides. Is it possible to have a negative 7 length of a square? Well, what would that look like? Negative 7, that sounds crazy, right? So we know for this time, we're only going to use the positive 7 as our answer. 7 centimeters would be the correct way to phrase this problem. The negative 1 for this time, we've got to toss it out. Here's the last thing I want to show you. We have x over 2 equals 5 over x. And we've got to solve for x. 
Well, as you can see, the only way we could figure this out would be by cross multiplying, right? You remember cross multiplying, we're going to do this here equals this here. X times X is X squared. 5 times 2 is 10. So now we've got to find the square roots of 10. Well, 10 is not a perfect square. So what we're going to do is say x equals and put our 10 under the radical sign. And we have to say it's going to be a positive or a negative, whatever that radical is, radical 10. Okay, so that is your answer. So I want you to know that it's not always just a perfect square you're going to get for your answer. If you don't get a perfect square, we just leave it under the radical, but make sure you mark it positive and negative. Okay, that's it. That's a whole bunch of things regarding equations with exponents. Definitely check out the practice set. Try a few problems for yourself to make sure you've got the hang of this. Definitely an important concept. You will see tons of this in algebra next year. It's Nicole the Math Lady. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh,